Before we get started, I want to apologize for the bad microphone today. I clicked the wrong button before we got started, and I'm very disappointed because I'm very excited about this podcast episode. But despite the bathroom feel, I think you're really going to enjoy it. But apologies for the quality. Hey, traders, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast, a video edition. So if you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, you get to see my delicious looking face today. I don't know why I chose that adjective, but I'm feeling delicious. Maybe because I'm very, very hungry and I'm ready to feast. But in today's episode, we are going to be answering a few very interesting questions that I got from a trader covering a handful of topics. One is going to be dealing with contradicting signals. Another one is going to be dealing with kind of the the power that psychology plays in your trading success. So these should be common to many of you guys out there. Now, if you haven't done so already, I want you to do two things. One, make sure you rate and review the podcast. We are growing, just took a sneak peek at the stats and we're up there again, inching uh, even higher, uh, going toward the top trading podcast out there for the end of 2024. So I'd like to get to that number one spot. And two, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Been getting a lot of questions lately about, hey, Akil, are there any visual videos that you do? And my answer is yes. I've been doing a weekly video on YouTube, The Trading Edge, showing you the best trading ideas that are on my radar for the week ahead for over a decade now. So make sure you subscribe, just kill Stokes on YouTube and check it out. So I got a couple questions from a trader on our tier one platform. And the first one is this, said Akil, if you can shed some light on this for me, please, or can you shed some light on this for me, please? What do I do if I have a contradicting signal slash pattern that builds while I'm already in a trade, even if I'm profiting at the moment? So basically the question is, imagine you are in a trade, it's a longer term trade, so you're sitting in, sitting in it, it's in profit, but it hasn't hit in your targets yet. What if you start to see a contradicting signal. So if you are bullish, if the market starts to show you bearish signals, how do you handle that? Um, And I'll I'll just kind of do the second question as well, because it kind of pertains to this too. The second question is also, is this an early acknowledgement of your mistakes after after having given it a fresh look, especially if you are already a few days in the trade, or is this fear? So let's talk about contradicting signals first. And before we get into the specific case of being in a trade, understand that contradicting signals should not occur, or rather contradicting signals pre-trade should not occur. You should never be in a situation where you're looking at a chart, doing your analysis, and you're looking to get bullish, and you're also looking to get bearish. One, this shows me that you're not doing your analysis correctly. Two, it shows me that you don't have a fully defined and refined trading plan. Because if you have a fully defined and refined trading plan, you should be looking for only one thing. And even if you do have multiple ways of trading, right, there should be, they should be organized in a way in your trading plan so that they don't contradict. So I'll give you a little bit of story about when I, how I learned this lesson, I guess, the expensive way. Um, a long, long time ago, I was a trend following trader, right? The trend is your friend, right? So I'd look to hop on trends and ride them to profits and glory, right? Imagine myself on like a unicorn and I'm, you know, a bag of money swinging around my head, right? Those are profits and glory. Um, unfortunately, it didn't always go like that. But I was a trend uh, continuation trader because it was a very easy strategy, one of the first easiest strategies for me to pick up and start trading. So, of course, I did it. The problem was I was coming off being a counter trend trader. And although I wasn't supposed to be doing it right, I was still looking for counter trend signals as well. And what would happen is essentially every time in order for my trend continuation trade to win. So I'd be in that trade first, but in order for it to win, it would have to break past a previous level of structure, which is what you expect in most continuations, right? Markets pull back and then they extend. When they extend, they extend past a previous level of structure. So that's a natural part of trend trading. However, counter trend to keel, right? Look this way, counter trend to keel. Um, 
is supposed to be trading at those levels of structure. So trend continuation trade, Akil was saying, buy, 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 breakout, breakout, breakout. Counter trend trading, Akil was saying, no, structure's gonna hold, stop, 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 stop. Buy, stop, buy, stop, buy, stop, buy, stop, right? And then you imagine head exploding parts all over the place, right? I really hope this is good video. <laughs> if not, I just sound like a crazy man. Um, but I always was stuck with this dilemma where I had to ask myself, do I hold on to my initial trade or do I give in to the contradicting signal? And of course, I had no rhyme or reason. I had no plan to tell me which one to do. So I would just do wh which, whichever one of those battling Akeels won. Like it was usually based off some sort of recency bias. So if my previous trade broke past and extended, please believe I was jumping on that unicorn trying to ride it until profits and glory. However, if my previous trade was stopped out and reversed, then I was all fearful and scared and, and, and counter trend trade keel hopped in and I would, I would leave my signal early for the new signal. And of course, in typical new trader fashion, let me know in the comment section if you guys have been through this, whatever I would do, the market would do the opposite, right? So the times where I would hold on, it would reverse and I'd lose and then I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna reverse this time. Then it would extend and win and I'd just be on the, on the wrong side of the market every time. And what that lesson taught me, that very expensive lesson, by the way, what that lesson taught me was that I needed to have clarity in what I was doing. And it's, you know, it started off by, hey, you can only trade one way. And that's what we kind of encourage our traders to do. Pick one style of trading first, master that one style, then move on to the next one. Um, but if you and when you do move on to that next one, you build that next one that have rules that don't contradict with that first one, right? You should have a primary strategy and then let's call it a secondary strategy. And you can choose your primary strategy by whatever you want. It could be the more profitable one. It could be the more frequent one. It could be the, the one that smells the best. I don't know. It doesn't really matter as long as you identify one as primary, one as secondary. And you want to build that secondary strategy so that it doesn't contradict with that primary strategy. Now, are there going to be some drawbacks to that? Yes. If you ever watched me trade live, I don't, I don't know how many times I've said this, especially in my trend trading trades, you'll see me say, man, I can't take this trade because the risk reward doesn't work. And like, I feel how the hell doesn't the risk reward work, right? I see that unicorn. I see glory and profits. Let's ride up to it. And I say, Yes, but I can't take target one up there. I have to take target one at this level of structure. I can only hold for that level to target two. Or you'll hear me say, oh, I can't take that, that retracement trade because it pulled back too deep. And if it pulls back too deep, then it means this. Or if it pulls back too shallow, it means that. So I have all these checks and balances inside my trading that stop me from getting contradicting signals. But like anything else in trading, there is a give and a take. It also means that I am going to miss some opportunities, whether it's an actual trading opportunity or whether it's profit. So that's just something that you have to accept in trading. Whatever you do, there's going to be some type of give back. Now, to the specific question of the trader, what do I do if I'm in that trend continuation trade? If I'm riding it to, say it with me, profits and glory, right? There we go. Strap on that unicorn. And let's say my targets are up here. Right. Again, visual audience, Spotify, YouTube, you get what I'm saying. If you're listening to this on audio, just imagine me holding my hand like in the air above my head to like visualize a, a target. If, if, if I have my target up high and price is making its way towards it, but let's say it's halfway there. Right. So I'm at the point where I'm looking at my screen. I'm feeling good because that everything's in green, which means money. Right. But it's not my money yet because I haven't hit targets. And then I start to see maybe another signal, you know, maybe I get another double top on the way and I start getting, I start asking myself, well, a double top, man, Akil, that is a counter trend strategy. Oh no, but I'm in this trend continuation trade. Do I hold in that trend continuation trade? No, the counter trend trade is going to win, right? Ooh, and all these evil thoughts enter your head. I promise I'm not crazy, but I'm just hungry. <laughs> um, what do you do in that situation? Well, there are two scenarios. One, and this follows up on the second part of the trader's question, is it driven by fear? Probably, right? Nine times out of 10, most of the mistakes that we make in trading are driven by greed and fear. The two little devils on our, on our shoulders barking bad stuff at us, right? So, and, and it's natural to be fearful. I mean, think about it like this, right? It's so hard to execute a trade. It's so hard to, to, to get to the point where you actually push the button whew, and you're in. Then imagine being in a trade. You're dealing with the emotional pull of like your money's on the table. You can't do anything about it. It's out there 
and now you're watching it either deplete or increase. If it depletes, you're getting scared because you're like, oh crap, I'm losing money. I want to get out. I want to get out. I want to get out. If it increases, you're scared because you're like, man, I made money, but I don't want to give any back. I want to get out. I want to get out. I want to get out, right? We're both dealing with fears here, and that's what causes a lot of our trading mistakes, right? That causes early stop taking where you take your trade out prematurely because you're afraid of losing more money or moving stops back because you're afraid of getting stopped out. So you think if I risk more, it'll be even better. Stupid, right? But it happens. We all do that. Or early profit taking where you're afraid to lose that money. So you just want to take, take it out because again, you can't go broke taking profits, which is the dumbest statement I've ever heard. You certainly can go broke taking profits if you take them prematurely, yet you take full losses. Do the math, right? Anyway, so it is fear. It is emotions. This is what causes those things, right? So on one hand, you have to defeat those psychological demons. You have to become disciplined enough, easier said than done, I know, and say, I am going to trust myself. I'm going to trust my analysis. I'm going to trust the hours and hours and hours that I've put into back testing that I am going to fulfill this trade and it is either going to hit my targets or I'm going to be stopped out, right? Those are the two outcomes. Or if you have this in your trading plan, this is a big if it needs to be in your trading plan, or if you have some type of active trade management, right? This is something that maybe not necessarily this way, but we encourage active trade management with our traders, meaning that when you're in a trade, if price is going, if price has given signals, right? Concrete technical signals, not you think and you feel that price is going in your direction, what you do is you slowly try to reduce your profit, right? Or uh, reduce your risk, excuse me. Step one is reduce your risk to, and it's all based off the charts, but make it smaller. Step two is hopefully eventually get the break even where it's risk-free. Step three is you lock in some profits and then you're in a risk-free situation. There is something else that you can do from an active trade management perspective. It's more kind of like active target taking, and I don't necessarily encourage this, but it is a method, um, probably more towards the advance. But if you're actively following a trade, and this is, is specifically probably more for trend traders, and the market gives you a clear contradictive signal, meaning it, it is a price pattern, it is a signal that things are going to reverse, then that can give you the ability to exit a trade either fully or partially. Now, again, I don't recommend this because of what I said earlier about the fear, and especially as a newer trader, we're going to see every single thing as a as a reason to exit, right? Price is going to be going up. It's going to give us 18 green candles in a row, right? Profits and glory. And then we're going to get one red candle. We're going to be like, oh, that's the sign. That's the sign. I got to exit, right? And that's not the sign. So, but, but again, as a newer trader and a highly emotional trader, as more newer traders are, that's typically what we're going to do. We're going to use it as any excuse. So, I recommend it as something that an advanced trader would do. And if you're going to do it, you need to be very specific about what signs, what signals um, cause you to do this. However, my advice would be more of an active trade management where you just reduce your risk versus taking profits off. That's going to get you in less trouble. So that is a way to handle that signal, uh, that, that um, situation if you get contradicting signals. But understand that you are always going to get contradicting signals in the market. Again, if you think about just a trend trading situation, for example, in order to reach that fulfillment of that extension, the market is going to ebb and flow. It's not just going to go straight up and give you pain free trades. It's going to go up and down and up and down and up and down. And every time it goes down, it's baiting you to get out. Right. But it's rewarding you when you stay in it and you catch that next wave up. I can promise you that. Right. We say patience pays literally in the market. And that is 100 percent true. Now, the next question is this. I'm going to try to read it and, and translate as best as I could. On a side note, this is exactly my present uh, heck of a trade situation on pound Aussie, right? Um, part two of my continuous stupidity is what I call it. Halfway through hitting my targets and sitting in a short position, I see a bull flag on the hourly, blah, 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 sealed by a nice pin bar. And I think to myself, time to jump off this train and go bullish now, right? Why do I allow myself to do this instead of sitting in for a win or a loss? And that, that's the question that I ask myself. I don't know. I'm being stupid. Why did I change my mind about the setup two days later after being in a trade? I don't know, just being stupid. As you can see, most of my mistakes originate from poor psychological slash mental structure foundations. 
too many times um, in this life and in trading too, I am not fully trading, just observing, yet I call it trading. The same feeling slash intuition saved me from disaster. So to me, it's not as simple as black and white. And the not as simple as black and white goes to um, referring to a little bit of the conversation I had where we talked about rules and they need to be black and white. And there shouldn't be situations where you act on intuition. It either is or it isn't. And that's what we say. That's what we call rules based trading. Now, there is discretion within that rules base, which allows for a little bit of interpretation. But you guys know how I feel about intuition, right? Intuition is a real thing. However, intuition is caused by something. And as traders, it's our job to figure out what what's that what causes that. Sorry, I can't get my words out. So think about it like this, right? I'm from Philadelphia, PA, not a great place, right? I like to think I have pretty good street smarts. I'm not a street dude at all. Don't get me wrong. I'm out there bullying people. But like I got street smarts because as a young kid, I was in some pretty rough situations and I had to be smart about how you handle them. Right. So I have this natural instinct to not get myself into trouble, to put myself in bad situations. You could ask my wife. We've had many encounters. Right. One encounter when we first met and I ran away and left her there because I assumed she was going to run with me got into trouble but we still got married um another encounter where something happened and i ran away again right but she ran right with me and that's when i knew she was the one i I proposed like a month later right but it's this tingly sense that you get where it's like something's up something's about to go down we need to get out of here and it's not just some magic spider sense trust me I, i tried I keep trying. I tried the Spider-Man thing, doesn't work, but I realized that it's because of different situations that have happened in my past that I have learned from. So deep somewhere in my brain, I know that when this happens or if this happens, then I need to react or this is the likely outcome. It's the same thing in trading. If we're noticing, we're sitting our we're sitting at our chart and being like, man, I know this is gonna reverse. I don't, you know, we, and we've all had that feeling. I just, I, I can't tell you why. I just know it's going to reverse. There's something in there that we've seen before. And this is why going to the sandbox is so important. The sandbox is what I call when you go back on the charts and just play around, look for stuff, make observations, take notes, right? And let's just say that you you see this one thing. And you're like, okay, well, it did reverse. I was right. And you're like, oh, okay, well, it was, you know, like two high test candles. We call them tweezer tops. Okay, whatever, a little tweezer tops, write it down, blah, blah, blah. You come back a week later and you're like, man, I think this thing's going to reverse again. And you take notes. You're like, man, what is, you know, okay, a little two high test candles. like, And then eventually you start putting it together like, wait a minute. I think my intuition is caused by this thing. This is the thing that I'm noticing that is sending those signals that this is going to reverse. And now you've identified what it is. You go back and test it. You get some quantitative data on it and you can see if it actually gives you or increases your edge or not. Um, Or if you're just going crazy. And that's how you turn your intuition, that gut feeling, into something that is usable. It becomes rules-based. Now it's part of your trading plan and you've evolved as a trader, right? You follow me? But we can't act on it until we do that. So a couple years ago, I did a study into a deep dive into volume. It was a a two-year deep dive into volume. And ask the traders in a live room. I, it took me, I, I dedicated a year to watching it live, but not trading it just to see if this intuition was correct. And we had, we did so many, so much analysis, analysis every day in a live room, every day in my personal trading. And I would get certain signals from this volume that said, do this, do this, do this, but I couldn't take them because it wasn't part of my trading plan yet. So whether it's something new you're working on, whether it's this intuition, it's okay to have it but we can't act on it until it's gone through the correct processes of testing it and ensuring that it's actually helping us. If not, what we think is intuition may sometimes be intuition, but sometimes it's just gonna be again, fear and greed. I should have done a different voice for greed, but you guys get it. It's gonna be those disguised as something where we're gonna be in a winning trade going our direction and then like, Fear is going to come in like, but it's going to be disguised as a a red candle. And we're going to be like, oh, that red candle, it's intuition. I have this feeling. My gut says that the trend is going to end. And it's really not our gut saying it. It's we're afraid of that red candle. And we've justified it in our head of saying, okay, well, I'm afraid if I use the excuse of this red candle and my gut feeling, 
then that allows me to get out of the trade and we eventually get what we want. And that's what happens in trading. Funny, we had a big old argument in the live room this morning about that with traders forcing things that weren't really there, but using things to make up signals that weren't there. And it was one of the rare times I got upset. It, it, it doesn't happen much, but I and, and <laughs> I got really upset this morning about that because I've been through this before and I know what type of damage it will do as a trader. So we can't rely on gut feeling. We can't rely on intuition. You know, we can say that sometimes it's going to save us for, uh, from disasters. Sometimes it's going to help us out. Yeah, right. Sometimes we can randomly push a button on a chart and make millions of pips because it can only go one of two directions, upper uh, directions, up or down. So it's not really saying much to be like, oh, this time it won because of my gut feeling. Like, no, it just happened to go that way. It's random right? because if you test it over time, you'll see that's randomness. So we can't allow ourselves to do that. That intuition, that gut feeling is really nothing more than fear and greed in disguise. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. A little bit crazy. I'm a lot bit hungry, but let me know what you thought. Also, if you have any ideas for future podcast episodes, I love answering questions like this. Let me know. You can write it in a little Spotify deal. You can leave it in the comment section on YouTube, or of course, you can hit me up in the DMs. You can slide into the DMs if you want and let me know what you want me to address there. So next time, plan to trade, trade your plan. Thank you for checking out the Trading Coach Podcast, and I'll see you guys next episode.